What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy Squiddy, back again with another video. And today I just want to do some uh, recap videos about some of the games I played in the ranking mode. Definitely going to start doing some more of these. So um, I'm playing Sky Striker off the bat. My opponent makes me go first, which makes me assume that it's a mirror match, uh, which it does turn out to be. I go ahead and activate Pot of Desires here just because I already have the Ray. And also I want more information. So I'm not going to be able to banish three Rays. I want more information to see what I want to engage into. Um, in hindsight, it was kind of a mistake playing the engage here, actually, because my hand was already so good for the mirror that I could have actually held the engage. So here on my Kagari, if he Baylor, then I would not have been able to add back the engage, meaning I could not add the second copy of engage with Shizu in the end phase because um, engage would have already been in the graveyard. And in the mirror match, you just want to engage as much as possible. It's like a race. Whoever gets the most advantage and then can finally kill their opponent with Axe Code or like whittle the game down to the state where they're in control usually wins. Um, but he doesn't actually be there, so I'm able to add the second engage. Obviously, I hold both in hand for the next turn. It's a lot like a game of Pokemon or chess where it's like a lot of tempo based as opposed to uh, where you're playing a combo deck where you just have to like set Widow Anchors and try to survive. Um, right off the bat, my opponent opens quite bad. He doesn't open Ray, so he goes Hornet Drones and Max C right away, which is really good for me because <laughs> um, I just realized my computer's kind of laggy. I'm not sure why that is. Gotta fix that. Anyways. Um, it's really good because in the mirror match a lot of the summons are inherent so you got a shock on the maxi and it can be awkward a little awkward sometimes but here he plays right into it with a non-inherent effect which summons a token so I chain maxi off the bat I'm gonna draw two cards guaranteed unless he wanted to take the to keep the token and then take a neg I see here he goes for a Hayate tries to dump Ray obviously um, I'm gonna go in the damage step for Vin Chalice because damage step um, cards that negate activations or uh, modify attack and defense can be used in damage step so I do that so he can't respond so now he's just sitting on a Hayate, I can deal with it, he doesn't have Ray next turn, it's easy for me to get rid of his monster. Um, he's gonna go ahead and set one and add Field Spell, he actually reveals uh, Jamming Waves, which is a little weird, I'm surprised it's being played, I didn't think it was that good, just because against like Floodgate decks, all their, the only cards that are threatening are the Floodgates, are the Flace Up Trap cards, and that doesn't really deal with it. And against uh, the combo decks, they just don't set anything, right? So I think Afterburn is just better in both scenarios, Afterburns can also be out on the gate. He targets a Chalice. I end up chaining the Chalice here, targeting my own Shizu because it's correct. Um, cards that are negated could not be negated again. And because Widow Anchor has to negate, then take. So do A, then B. If he tried to little Widow, Widow Anchor my Shizu, he would not be able to take it because it's already negated. So that's why I did that. He ends up going into Shizu because he has to because he doesn't have Ray. So I draw another card. This time I've drawn three cards. So the game's basically over. I have double engage in hand. He tries to add engage, I Widow Anchor, and also take and put it back just so it occupies his main monster zone, meaning he cannot flip any uh, Sky Striker spells, including Widow Anchor, which he may have set. I drop return, and I'm just so far ahead at this point, but uh, I realized I could definitely go for a game after I engage a couple of times and draw into uh, certain cards. I draw the multi roll to get that set up right away. Activate multi roll just to get the extra name by. Uh, extra activation name by activating engage. I search for shark cannon just to get it set up. In the mirror match you can use shark cannon to recycle your opponent's Kagari and add back spells like engage on their turn which is really really powerful especially since engage is at one. Here I realize I can go for game and do 8000 actually or um, still be in a good spot even if he had Nibiru but he max sees so I end up just using multi roll to send my effect veiler to the graveyard so he doesn't draw any cards. To clear my main monster zone, I just attack and I set my cards in path without special summoning so he does not draw. Uh, in phase, I use multi road to set the Widow Anchor. My opponent's just super behind here, but in the mirror match, you can actually come back even if you're down like five cards. If you happen to draw engage and engage in another engage, all of a sudden that's a plus like four cards, right? So it is a little dicey. You have to be, you, you can't get ahead of yourself. You have to be, make sure that you're, um, very level-headed and think about all the options and possibilities. Here is pretty good for my opponent. He uses uh, the air space and then chains the shark cannon to special summon a ray. So now he has a monster. Obviously, I can't interact with that. So all of that goes through. And he actually does reveal an engage here. So this is what I mean. If he has an engage, all of a sudden he can engage again. And he could actually be in this game. He reveals two engages, which is funny. So I know he only has one now. He adds the engage. Um, and then off the bat, he's going to link off so he can play the engage. Obviously, he's going to play it into the non-infirm zone to add a certain card. He ends up adding Afterburner here, which I think is not a great play. It's quite misplay because in the mirror match, you just want to gain advantage as opposed to taking away your opponent's advantage. You just want to win the race. Him taking away cards from me, I'm already so far ahead that it doesn't even matter. It's basically him just losing cards. He ends up just popping uh, my monster and my set infirm and then tries to call by the grave on Ray, which I guess like, I mean, I guess. I don't think it's ideal. Um, and Ray is also negated on his end too, which 
comes back to hurt him, especially on the next turn because his ray would not be in effect, meaning I could just swing over his monsters freely without being scared of Ray coming back and him adding back engage with Kagari and so on and so forth. He does summon Kagari here. Um, I could have actually Widow Anchored the Hayate before, but I didn't want to. Obviously, I wanted to make sure um, and stop the Kagari just in case he did have a Ray or something that he drew for turn and he could have gotten the Kagari and engage because that's I felt like that was the only way that he could really lose at this point. So I do actually Widow take the Kagari and negate it. And it does actually turn out to be the right play because he does have another Ray that he drew for turn. He ends up linking that one off to Shizu, which is fine. The fact that I took his Kagari is very good because it'll return to his main monster zone in the end phase, so he can't use any effects. I decided to Rose here because I had Nib. I was like, I was gonna Nib, and then once Nib actually takes care of his Shizu, I can actually summon back Rose because it's a card effect that sent his extra extra zone monster to the graveyard. But he does chain Maxi, so here I decide to actually chain the Nib so he doesn't get the extra draw and nib everything on the board, and then Rose comes out, which is fine and dandy, basically the same thing that I was thinking of. He draws one card for the Rose, and he tries to bring back Ray, but like I mentioned before, called by the Grave negated it, so he cannot do that. He sets an Imperm, which is quite obvious in the multi Rose spot. I decide to set the Engage, and here it's just like the game's completely over. Just run off of the game. Uh, it doesn't really matter what I do at this point. I can just kill him this turn. I end up actually missing Liesl this turn, just because I was thinking about something else, I was thinking about how to get the 3k damage in, not realizing that I could have... Not realizing... So I go into um, Selene here, he imperms. I went ahead not realizing that I could actually use a nib and the Selene to make Axis Code, and then just engage and still kill him, but that's alright. Didn't really matter. I was just trying to get the game over as fast as possible at this point, since it was already done. He imperms the Selene, which is fine. Uh, I end up going to the battle phase, so here's my misplay where I miss Liesl. Swing pass, swing for 3k, and then in the main phase two, I'm like, oop, dope. I could have made Axis Code Talker, so I'll just make it now. Uh, might as well pop the field spell anyways, just because Ray's already still negated by Called by the Grave, so even if he brings out Ray, we can just pop that as well, and then just put our opponent on absolutely nothing. And again, in the mirror match, it's always good to set up as soon as you can to get as many engaged as fast as you can and as many as you can. I just get the ball rolling and also just set up multi row as fast as you can with uh, Widow Anchor and Shark Cannon. Shark Cannon, obviously, to summon your opponent's monsters on their turn. So you can take advantage of their effects. You're essentially playing on their turn by summoning monsters. You can use Kagari. It's restricted to once per turn, but why not use it on your opponent's turn? So that's basically twice. You get once on your opponent's turn, once on your turn. Um, same thing with Shizu. You can even summon that back and add in your end phase. So fun things to note in the mirror match. I passed my turn. I have just everything. Um, obviously, multi is negated by the Imperm. He actually top decks um, a copy of the second copy of Engage, which is quite funny. He's gonna activate it here, but obviously, like at this point, it doesn't matter anymore because, it's, like, it's just, like we've run away with the game so far ahead. He can't draw another Engage or anything. He tries to Widow Anchor here, Desperation. Obviously, we chain the Widow Anchor um, because I mentioned before, Widow Anchor is a it's a, you have to do A, then B. So A is you have to negate, then take. So you have to negate in order to take. Obviously, I chained, so my monster is negated. So he cannot negate, then take. And yeah, that's about it. If you guys like this video, definitely like and subscribe. I'm going to make some more uh, recaps of high-level ranking play. And uh, yeah, see you all guys next time.